Hello, Angelfish. I decided rather than re-record a flip through of my first bullet journal, that I'm just going to post the other one that was on my original YouTube page. So the commentary on it is a little strange, but it's historic. <laughs> I don't know, vintage. It's it's something. It's something. We'll leave it at that. It's something. So um, I hope you enjoy it, and I am probably going to be posting another flip through at another time with just the imagery, and I'm not going to worry about telling you what all this stuff is. You just get to look at the pretty stuff in there. So I think that'll be more fun. Hello my fantastic friends, I'm Mermaid Melissa, and today we are looking at my first bullet journal. So I got into bullet journaling um, in 2016. I um, discovered it, I would say, um, in June, and I spent that entire month of June researching what to do for my bullet journal before I started um, this one. This bullet journal was started in July of 2016 and goes till February of 2017. And I learned so much when I did this bullet journal that you're going to see um, in true time basically how it evolved. Um, I was very nervous when I started. I didn't know what I was doing um, despite all my research. And I pretty much um, followed a lot of Boho Berry's templates. And if you know who she is, you will recognize some of her stuff. Um, in here. Um, now this is um, my actual bullet journal, so there are going to be a few things that I'm going to be blurring out, you know, in um, post. So um, just be prepared for that. So this journal went everywhere with me. You can see it has a lot of wear and tear. And I did put the sticker on the front so I knew when it was um, created. Uh, you'll see in my other videos that I stopped doing that because I didn't like the way it looked on the front there, even though for the first one it was fine. And I also have a little stamp here of a dolphin from Lawn Fawn, and you will see a lot of Lawn Fawn stamps in my book. They are my favorite stamp company, and I use them a ton. And I'll talk about using stamps too in here. And you'll see definitely a lot of um, stamp work throughout everything, and I'll talk about using my own art too. So this here uh, is the first page, the name page, and I put my name on there and I illustrated it with a little um, orca. And which was kind of funny is this sticky note is here. Um, because I do teach how to do bullet journaling at my job and I didn't want all of my um, residents knowing where I lived and I do let them go through my bullet journals. Um, however, when I do that, I do use paper clips and keep pages closed and ask them to be respectful and not look at those pages. And most of the time they are. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go through and show you um, what I have done in this journal. Basic flip through kind of a thing. Um, so I used a lot of stamps, and I didn't collect these stamps all at once. I did so over the time that I was creating this journal. So you're going to see um, just a lot of things. I had these beautiful ocean stamps with quotes and stuff that I really liked, so I was using those. Um, here is my index. Whew. <laughs> Um, I was kind of nervous. I didn't think that it would all fit in here. Um, amazingly, it did. Um, just because I didn't think three pages was going to be enough. But it was, and I'm very glad for that. <laughs> um, so you can see, like, when I did a monthly spread, which repeats, of course, I would do it in um, all capitals and then underline it so I could know when the month started there. Here is my first version of a key. <laughs> um, with my strange little key drawing, I don't think that would work in any door for reals. <laughs> so a lot of these symbols are traditional um, bullet journal symbols. Uh, the task is a square, um, and then a completed task is supposed to be filled in. 
And then I developed some things that I used as in-betweens. So when I start a task, it has a line through it. If it's partially completed, it's half filled. Um, Cancelled is just an X through it, that's standard. I actually never use the clock and the deadline stuff, that's from the traditional kind of bullet journaling, um, like, um, how would you say it, um, the traditional bullet journaling ways that that's, were started by Ryder Carroll, kind of, and evolved. <laughs> um, I don't, didn't really use the events or the notes. I used the migration one a lot. Um, alerts I used primarily for weather, and you'll see some of that. Um, and then I actually color-coded a lot of things. You'll see that much later, because I didn't use them right away. And I'll show you something else that I did that was pretty awesome, in my opinion, um, once I really started doing this. So when we get to this portion in the journal, I'll show you the awesome bit. So I also use a lot of stickers. You'll see stickers from time to time. So right in from the key, we have our year at a glance. So this was the coming year. And I believe I only made it to February with this journal, but I did do the full year. And each date on here that is colored in stood for a different um, event or special day I needed to remember. So for example, a pink day, if I go here, is a holiday. Days that were purple were as a vacation. Birthdays were in green and a special event was in blue. And that was kind of fun here uh, because this one was actually a special event and a holiday. October 31st is my engagement anniversary. And since I'm not married yet, we celebrate that. And it's Halloween, so it's perfect. <laughs> um, so following this, um, then traditional aspects of the bullet journal, you would go into your monthly spread, then your daily spread. For me, I do my collections after this. So I had my goals here for the year. And unlike uh, your goals you would do for like a New Year's res rev, oh my gosh, words, <laughs> for your New Year's resolution, uh, these goals just get carried to the next journal. So if I don't complete these within the year, I just make them part of the next set of goals that I have for the next year in my next journal. This year is something that I found and it really spoke to me, so I decided to do it. And it's called the undo list. And these are things that I'm done doing in my life. Things that I don't want to do anymore. So it's things like working harder than those I work with giving up too soon, defining myself as damaged or broken, being afraid of failing, not taking care of myself, seeking happiness outside of myself, hiding behind fear, believing my weight defines my value, filling my negative emotional pit by shopping, saying yes when I want to say no, keeping my opinions to myself, worrying what others will think, being walked on, not seeking help when I need it, putting off my needs for others, and believing my feelings are not important. So those are a list of things that I want to stop doing. And I've actually continued this list into my um, bullet journals as I've gone on, and you'll see this repeating again. But what I put on here changes because I have stopped doing a few of these things. Um, next, I did a bookshelf here with books that I read. Um, I was a little overzealous and I believed I would read a lot more than I did. <laughs> so there's a lot of blank books here. And kind of ironically in my current one, I don't have enough books. So I have to find a happy medium for it. Um, here I was doing movies scene. And my fiance really loves to go to the movie theater and just watch movies in general, and me, not so much. I, I just, I don't know why. I enjoy stories and stuff, but um, I'm just not really big into going to the movie theater or things like that. So I did this to hopefully 
kind of force myself to go for him um, to do something that he enjoyed, you know, the kind of give and take you do in relationships. And I uh, created like a rating system here um, for it and um, had these cute little film reels and I would draw little like things in here. This is Finding Dory, Warcraft, The Witch, Ghostbusters, and Crimson Peak. And so they all kind of have little illustrations with them. Um, but it didn't really help. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. Um, here was video games I'd beaten. So it was something kind of like the books. I wanted to keep track of video games. Uh, and it didn't really pan out. Um, when I first started this, I completed three that I had finished that I really loved. Portal, Portal 2, and Bioshock. Um, as kind of inspiration, um, for what the rest of the page would look like. And I put games on here that I was playing or replaying and working on, um, Bioshock 2, Bioshock Infinite, um, the FNAF series, and it just never took off. Um, primarily because my main game of choice is World of Warcraft, and they can't really put a continuation MMO RPG on here. I mean, I guess I could have put each expansion pack, and, um, and when I completed it, I could have colored it in, but it just didn't seem the same as finishing Portal, you know. Uh, over here was my creative ideas list, so anytime I had a creative idea, I would write it down just to make sure that I could uh, remember to do it later. Um, so some things on here are like um, create a Bujo blog, which I have and it's kind of sparse, pardon, <laughs> but it's there. Um, something here um, is keeping track of my uh, menstrual cycle for health reasons. Um, here I have a um, weight loss tracking um, and I would do like mini goals and, and things to help keeping me going and stuff like that. What I didn't like is that I started it at my weight I was currently instead of acknowledging the weight I had lost to begin with. Um, so in my other journals you'll notice that I'll put like my extreme weight here and then kind of that broken graph symbol and then the weight I'm starting at and going through. Here is, um, I was trying to draw all the Fitbit badges I collected and I just kind of gave up after a while. I mean, they were cute, I really liked them, but um, I just couldn't keep up with drawing the ones I completed. Uh, here was a thing that my fiance and I did where we were trying to hike all the different waterfalls in the Columbia River Gorge. Uh, and all the ones with the stars are the ones that we made it to, and there should be a star here. I'm still bitter. Uh, it got dark so we had to turn back but we were literally like right around the corner from it and we we were so close but it was dark and we were in the woods and we didn't want to be stuck out there so we had to come back so we will get to that someday I mean it's been so many years but one day we will get to there I also keep in here goals for my savings and debts I have to repay, um, most of them are student loans, but also things for my parents and stuff. So here we go on to my first monthly spread. Holy crud, this thing is completely sparse compared to what I do now, and even compared to what you'll see later, and I'll show you a comparison then. So this was, I have no idea what I'm doing, let's do some kind of decoration and, um, get into this. Yay. So this was my monthly spread and, um, little has changed with how I do it. Um, I did have some symbols here, um, that I would use in tracking stuff. And then my goals that I wanted to complete for the month were here. So, and then these were different things that were important that I had to keep, um, aware of. I mean, the release of Pokemon Go, right? That was important. <laughs> Um, this was my friend's dog, almost made it on television, he was like part of a, um, like, call out for dogs in the area, and he went and auditioned but didn't make it, um, but I was still proud, and he looked super happy and proud there. Um, so just little things like that, you can mark holidays, I mean, it's completely up to you. Um, from there, I used to do a thing where I would do a doodle a day. 
and I was very focused on becoming more creative. Um, that's why I started bullet journaling. Instead of just doing everything on my phone, I wanted to do something with my hands and be creative again. Uh, so this one here was the theme of the ocean by PTL Doodle. I think that this theme actually wasn't for July, but I picked it anyways because I love the ocean and I wanted to do it. So um, you just look at what the prompt is and you draw it and I set mine up to look like a little calendar. Um, and I really like this. I think my favorite one is the angler fish. Um, holding a sign that says free hugs because anglerfish are pretty creepy and I think a lot of people would not want to hug it. <laughs> um, after the doodle a day I did my gratitude log. One thing I was grateful for every day. It didn't have to be anything huge. It could just be that my coffee tasted great um, or that you know my bed is warm and soft. You know it's about appreciating the little things. Um, here is my habit tracker and you can tell that I like rainbows. <laughs> um, so this is just how I wanted to track um, my habits here and to try and make things into habits. Um, so some of them are pretty sparse and I pretend not to notice, but I do and it breaks my heart. <laughs> um, specifically this nice blank line where I'm supposed to be practicing my harp. Um, but you know, that's why I have this as a visual so I can see that and go, I really need to work on that. And then here we go into the first time I did a weekly spread or a six day spread technically. I still had no idea what I was doing and you might notice this is a boho berry layout with this flag and these um, dividers and stuff and it's just amazing because I remember what I was doing when I wrote this. Like, this little baby sad dory is because I wanted to buy decorative fish at the party store and they didn't have any, and it was just sad. <laughs> but it's so ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I was just like, okay, um, I did it, yay, my day, day one. And then even here you can see how stuff evolved. It went um, to include like the weather, and then I was including my water intake. Um, then I started to do um, like a spending log to keep track of my finances, um, which I know it's blurred, but trust me, that's what's there. <laughs> um, and then I learned that I needed like a spread, so that's why it's on the back and front there. Um, it'll be spread later. <laughs> that sounds a little not right, but anyways, moving on. I had weather icons because I really love to draw these miniature pictures to indicate the weather and different events. Um, and then I even started to have like a layout in my um, daily corner or the corner of my daily spread. So like I would put the weather icon here and the temperature and then I would have my water tracker. Um, and then, you know, I had the little warning indication here to indicate of like severe weather or when it was an alert and like there were some things on here that I mean I never used we don't really have blizzards out here um you know no sandstorms I don't have to worry about tsunamis living this far inland um but I did get to use the meteor shower one and that one made me like super happy <laughs> Um, so then I continued on, um, just trying things out. That's what a lot of this was, was experimentation. Um, and you can see here, it started to evolve already. I started doing ribbons, because ribbons were like the in thing. And I really liked how they looked, and I used a stamp in there. Um, and it was simple, just stamp, stamp, ribbons, colored, done. So I could set up my days really um, easy. I mean, as long as I had enough space for the ribbon, then that's what mattered the most. Um, I also put in quotes that I found important or inspirational, and I would add illustrations like this rose. I drew it here. This is actually a rose that was blooming in my garden at the time. Um, so it's like another bit of a memory going on. Um, and here's a lawn fawn stamp that I um, edited just a bit to fit what I needed it for. Um, here is the um, two main Japanese alphabets, hiragana and katakana, because I was studying Japanese um, 
I still am, I just don't have as much time to, unfortunately. And this was a way to help me memorize and remember um, the different alphabets and like what the sounds are and words and stuff. You'll see more of that later. And then you can see rainbows, they're coming in. Uh, more lawn fawn. Um, and it was just great. And I loved it so much. And I would do um, this thing now where I did, you know, I, I spaced it out so it was an even six per spread. Um, and then sometimes I would leave one blank and create a scene using like lawn fawn stamps. And so they would be motivational so that. Um, when I would get to this section, it would be all ready for me there. And I would do these um, spreads about a week or two weeks in advance, so sometimes I actually would forget that I was doing, um, or that I had this waiting for me, and when I'd get to this page, I'd be like, oh, that's so sweet, and it would kind of lift my spirits a little. Um, here's some more of that Japanese I was uh, telling me about. Um, this was keeping track of my Facebook and Instagram followers. I had a small budget plan here. And then, um, this was my first brain dump. And I severely underestimated how much space I would need for a brain dump. Um, I did this cute little Rapunzel just hanging out. And, um, I thought, oh yeah, that'll be great for a month. Nope, I needed so much more room. And then you can also see here, um some ink started to ghost through from a stamp on the other side and um, really you should test your inks and stuff before you use them so you can plan around that and I didn't quite know that at this time um, but that's what you do in here you learn and you move on um, then here this was a whole day dedicated to my um, time I spent at the Portlandia mermaid parade this was the first one ever that they did and it was great my fiance dressed up as like a pirate and um, pulled me around in this wagon that we got. <laughs> um, and then here I would do like a, a reflection about how I thought it went for that month. And so that was basically my um, monthly spreads and it just repeated until the book filled. So I'll just kind of go through and show you kind of the brief stuff here. So we have August was... Uh, uh, Neko Atsume cat collecting and I included like my favorite cats as well as one that looks like my um, little Siamese that I have um, The drawing a day thing I started to do my own that I kept on my blog and this one was um, Japan and I wanted to do it so that it was like cultural stuff not just oh, you know sushi oh, Okay, ignore the fact there's sushi right there, you know anime how does she go? You know, I, I wanted to stay away from that. I wanted to look at culturally relevant stuff. Um, so that's what I did here. And then things started to get a little more decorative. Uh, here was my um, spending spread, and I messed up on it. And rather than like get angry and tear it out, I just covered it up. I used um, this from an old um, journal I had, taped it in with some washi, and then this was a sticker that I actually um, drew and developed and put on my Etsy, and I printed out the whole page and just stuck it on there and colored it in, and that was that. Covered it up. Perfect. <laughs> oh. uh, and then I went on to doing this. Now as you can see it evolved even further. And it has this line, and this line was the hours of the day, and these were color-coded by what I was doing. I didn't feel like I had enough time in my day, and I wanted to know what was going on. Where was my time going? So I did this color-coding thing, and remember that thing I said I'd show you? Well, here it is. It's a little fold-out, and this way I could keep track of stuff and color it in appropriately. But I didn't have to keep like flipping back and forth to a specific place. So I put this in here and it just folds right out when I need it. And then when I don't, I just fold it right back and there you go. So more long fun. Told you I love those guys. I really wish um, they would hire me. So Lawn Fun, if you're watching, um, contact me and I will send you some uh, links to my portfolio page and I will do some designs for you and please hire me. I would love to work there. <laughs> um, video not sponsored. 
<laughs> uh, here's another sticker I did. Um, I still have these up on my Etsy. People can print them out and um, on just like sticker paper color and then put them in your journal so you can resize them and stuff. Um, but you know, I just had fun with that. Um, more lawn fun. <laughs> and then um, just my month in review. And pretty soon I stopped doing that. But uh, September we had a hippocampus here um, based on a photograph that. Uh, my friend uh, Raina Murr took. You might know her from Halifax Mermaids. Um, and then you can see that my designs and stuff, or my bullet points here, my little symbols, whichever you want to call them, started to get more complicated um, and more elaborate for things. Um, so, and I would write down um, things that happened that were, you know, important to me. Um, like, my old Dalmatian, his birthday is September 6th, um, he passed away um, quite a few years ago, but I still have this photo actually up on the desk in front of me, and um, I just marked that with a little paw print and angel wings, um, all sorts of different things in here. Uh, Studio Ghibli was that draw day thing, they didn't turn out really good at all, I mean... She looks great, May, that smile, but everyone else is kind of like, eh. I mean, you can't really mess up no face, but yeah, I think May turned out the best, and maybe Yubaba slash Zaniba. Pick one, they're the same, just about. <laughs> you can't really mess that up because it's great either. Anyways, moving on. Uh, gratitude, habits, blah, blah, blah. And then, surprise, surprise, a mermaid. <laughs> As if you didn't know. And uh, this was my first collage I did in here for Fairy Worlds. So I picked some pictures that were my favorites from that event, and including a shot of all of us here, and um, just made this great collage. Um, a list of stuff I needed to pack, um, things I bought, my favorite things that were there, and the bands that I really, really loved that were there. And then, oh my gosh, it changed again. <laughs> I told you this thing evolved so many times. So now I have boxes and I could do eight in a spread. And the water consumption was moved here. These were moved um, down here, the hours. And I'm, it's just everything shifted. And it was like, it just felt so much better. I was so excited when I um, could finally use these after um, laying them out. And just in case you're wondering where all my time went, um, sleep and work. That's, that's what I discovered, so pretty soon I stopped doing it, but for that time, that's what it was. Um, this was a dewdrop testing page for my inks and my stamps, um, so I could see just how badly they bled through. Uh, this here was a fun page, things I love, um, so I was really working on being artistic again and, you know, coloring things in that I really, really enjoy. Um, and then this here I think is very important um, for some people. Actually, I mean, if I'm honest, I think it's important for everybody. I just don't think everybody will acknowledge it. Um, this is what I refer to as an anchor list, as you can see there. And what this is, is a list of people that you can go to when you're not feeling the best and you need some support. And these people will not judge you. They will not um, become angry at you. They understand that you are going through difficult times and you need some assistance and they are there to support and be an ear and do whatever else they can and um, you know I don't I don't put people on this list lightly and um, I don't just you know go to them for every little thing. I mean, I save it for big stuff. Um, of course, I'm friends with these people too, so I would hang out with them or talk with them anyways, but when it's, when I'm not feeling my best, um, I know I can talk to somebody on this list and be like, hey, I need some help. So, um, I do think that it's important for everybody to have lists like this, um, but, you know, I understand that some people might feel stigmatized to keep things like this in their journal, but it's your journal, and nobody's going to see it unless you share it. 
Um, I started to do the Calm Marie method of cleaning out my stuff, and I made a checklist. I only got through jackets <laughs> during this time. Um, I've continued this on though and gotten rid of a lot more stuff. I think I'm all the way through the clothing and books part of it. <laughs> um, went here. Uh, more Lawn Fawn stickers. I really loved doing these little things, decorations. Um, and another um, brain dump. I think this was the last time I did a singular page. Um, I tried to do an art supply list of stuff I had that I didn't need, but didn't work, you know. I kept buying stuff. These, these are the greatest stamps. They are so cute. I love these neurotic little cats. And so I tried to make my whole spread look the same by like making them squiggly and having fun with it. And oh, they are so cute. Um, I did a um, magic or Wicca themed um, draw day here. Uh, things I was grateful for. I mean, it, you can tell it's all repeating. Um, here I was doing workouts. So um, yeah, I mean, it just, you can see just how it evolves. And I'll just flip through some pages for you until I get to something that I want to stop and talk about. Although I do want to mention these fish. These beautiful fish are by Hero Arts, and these are layer stamps. So each color is a different layer, and then I drew on it with a gold marker, but um, they do kind of tend to bleed um, pretty profusely, so just be wary of that. Here, I'll stop here really quick. Um, this has some really fun things on it. These are like correction tape, but they have pictures in them instead. I saw these um, on a video about Japan and their stationery, and I fell in love, and then I was so glad that they actually had these at the craft store near me, because um, I love them so much. And then, um, just a fun thing, I met Matt from Two Best Friends, or Super Best Friends, at a um, gaming convention when I was cosplaying as GLaDOS and loved it. Great. I love that show. Go watch them. <laughs> oh, collage. My fiance and my's um, weekend beach trip for our anniversary. Um, I didn't really need to tape everything down, but I did because I was afraid of ruining the pictures. <laughs> um, but the sea lion, I love him. I sneezed and woke him up. That's why he looks grumpy. <laughs> You'll see this design here um, by Lawn Fawn used a couple of times. Uh, I love this motif and so I would repeat it and then I would just choose a different dolphin species. Um, this is like my second favorite dolphin species. Uh, these are called striped dolphins. My first is the orca because yes they are actually dolphins. <laughs> I have patterns in here for crochet blankets, and so um, it's very much like pixel art, and you would just crochet a square and sew it together. I wonder which Pokemon I picked. <laughs> Sometimes pages don't get completed, and that's okay. Um, they, like, this was supposed to be a, a schedule for my days, and I just never finished it. And you know what? That's okay. I'm not beating myself up over it, and I just left it the way it was. as kind of a memory. So my drawings started to fade, and I um, actually never quite kept up with this, so eventually I just, like, stopped um, doing these. Same thing with my spending logs, I just never could keep up, and I had it all on my phone, so that was one thing I just, you know, gave to technology and kept out of my journal. Um, some people keep recipes in their books, and um, for this one I was no different. 
Um, I learned how to make macarons this year, and so this is the recipe I used. Um, I also kept in my basic um, chocolate chip cookie recipe here. This here is um, kind of the first time I did a really elaborate monthly spread and I was really focused on more art, doing more art stuff. That's why I wanted to do this journal. And so here I have a scene um, in the Pacific Northwest where I live. We have some orcas um, swimming through some of our islands and an osprey. Um, I love osprey and this scene is just perfect for um, the area in which I live. I may not be like on the coast, um, but when I travel there, this is this is like what I see. Um, I mean, the orcas don't come as far south um, often unless they're traveling to the sea lion caves for a snack. <laughs> but um, yeah, we still got osprey and eagles. And it's beautiful. By the time I got to February, things started to kind of fizzle out. Um, I was really trying to keep up, but this was like the last month that I was migrating into the next bullet channel. And so things started to kind of fade. Um, I did do a little Valentine's Day spread here, but you'll see that it like stuff just didn't get colored in all the way, um, and things got left undone. And that's just something that happened. Um, but I learned to prevent this by starting to um, move into my next journals earlier. Um, so, I mean, that's just another learning experience there. I had brush pen testing pages to learn. Um, never used them. And I had all these extra pages in the back here. Um, but something I do want to show you is that I did pen testing. So I knew how much all of my pens that I used would um, bleed. So you can see these ones are pretty good. Um, and then these were just colored pencils, so it didn't matter about that. Uh, and then I kept like a washi tape collection of all the different washies I had at the time. Um, because if I used them all up, I wanted something to be like, oh yeah, I used to have one like that. <laughs> um, addresses of my friends so I can send them gifts. I will blurb it out. And that is my first bullet journal that I ever did. So you can definitely tell that there was quite an evolution from my first month here to even that one with the killer whales. Um, if I can find it. Stalling for time, stalling for time, stalling for time. I know it was January. There it is. <laughs> so, like, you know, as you do this, you're going to change, you're going to um, figure out different things that you like, you know, your work will evolve. So don't despair when you first start if it's like really sparse and you don't know what you're doing. I didn't either. And so um, when I teach my classes at work, I do like to tell people, you know, this is where I started, and this is okay. This is perfectly fine. You don't have to get this elaborate. This was, this is my choice. This is what I wanted. If you want to stay simple like this, totally fine. All right? So do not feel pressured by any means when looking at bullet journal stuff online and when you're looking up inspiration. Do not get discouraged. Just keep doing what you want and make little changes and pretty soon you'll see how your stuff evolves and it will be amazing.